pages. So, if you want to check them out. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm Oliver Davis. I'm OP Davis, pretty much everywhere. I'm Drupal.org, on GitHub, and Twitter, everywhere. Um, I work as a senior developer for AppNovation. Um, I'm a Drupal core contributor, mentor. I maintain various contrib modules. Um, I'm also the co-organizer of the Drupal Bristol and PHP Southwest user groups. Um, I'm one of the founding and co-organizers of Drupal Camp Bristol, which is a little bit relevant because uh, this talk talks about how we migrated the previous Drupal Bristol user group site onto Drupal 8. Um, so a little bit of backstory. Uh, Drupal 6 to 7, to go from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7, um, there are a few different options. Um, the first was there's an upgrade path in core. So you take your old Drupal site, you'd copy the new files onto the old one, you'd run update.php, and it would do all the database updates behind the scenes. Um, essentially, your old data is still in your database. So there's no, it's not removed, it's not clean, it's still sat there. Um, I worked on Drupal.org, I used to work for the Drupal Association, and there were still database tables there from, I believe, Drupal 4, back from when the original site was built. Because it had been upgraded in place every time, that data is still there, and there's a lot of crap still sat around in your database. Um, the other option is to do a migration. So for Drupal 7, um, there's no migration in core, but it was provided by um, one or possibly two migration contrib modules, the main one being after they migrate. Uh, and the second, there was a helper for migrate underscore D to D. So for Drupal to Drupal migrations, particularly help with upgrading from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7, for example. Uh, whereas if you were upgrading from a custom database, maybe um, another CMS or custom thing, as we did in this case, um, the migrate module is, is fine. Um, it takes a different approach. So you start from scratch. You start with a completely plain Drupal site. You build it all up again from the ground up, and you import your data into it. That gives you the option to only migrate the data you want to migrate, not everything. Um, and you can also perform various transformations on the data whilst you're doing the migration. Um, so essentially both the modules provide base classes to extend. Um, various things like there's, I think, a class actually called migration. Um, and what the, the idea is you write your own custom module, you extend the base class in your module, you tell the migration how to work and then you run it. Um, the migrate D2D module sort of provided a layer in between that. So essentially you'd have a Drupal 7 um, term migration class would extend the one that the migrate module gave you and it would do some stuff for you. You'd extend that and then just do the bits you need to do rather than have to do everything. <coughs> um, yeah, so essentially configuring a migration, this is how we have to do it in Drupal 7. Um, so in this case, we've got a module called My Migration Module. Um, you'd have a file that's the name of your module dot migrate dot inc. You'd have a function that would implement uh, the Migrate API, and then you have this huge array of information that you're passing into the migration. So in this case, we're specifying the API. So the Migrate API version two. Uh, we're defining groups for our migration. This was taken from the Migrate um, module example. So there's a lot of beer and wine references, um, but not mine, honest. Um, this continues on. So then, as well as your groups, you've got an array of actual migrations with class names, as key, um, class names, group names. I think we all agree this is, uh, especially this one, quite verbose. A lot of text. Um, mostly, all, as you can see, basically all PHP. Um, a lot of quite descriptive but fairly long method names we have to use multiple, multiple times. Um, so essentially, so we have migrations in Drupal 7, as I said, a lot of verbose code, uh, a lot of nested arrays because Drupal, um, and yeah, again, a lot of descriptive but fairly long method names. Which so in Drupal 8, things have changed a little bit. Um, there is no upgrade path. So you can't take the Drupal 7 site, put Drupal 8 on top of an updated PHP. That no longer exists. Um, the migrate module is now in core. 
the migrate D to D module has been renamed to migrate underscore Drupal, and there's also a migrate Drupal UI module. Um, there are still additional modules in Contrib. So migrate tools is one, um, provides some of the backporting functionality essentially from D7, um, and also there's another one called migrate plus. Plus extends the thing. Tools essentially adds various drush commands and things you would have been used to if you'd have done a migration in Drupal 7. And rather than having all the verbose PHP code all in classes, it's split in, there's still PHP classes, but we're also using something called annotations, um, which essentially are comments that actually pass and run as code, and also using uh, YAML configurations because Drupal 8. Um, so if you open the Drupal 8 site, you'll see this on your module screen. Um, you'll notice that they are within a group called experimental, which means they're not technically stable, still in core. Um, and I found this, few, when I initially did this migration, probably a year, a year and a half, maybe even two years ago, things have changed during that time. Um, essentially, experimental modules are modules in core, but don't adhere to semantic versioning, particularly. So they can be breaking API changes within minor versions, which isn't normally how semantic versioning works. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, so my particular use case, I had to build a source database because I didn't have one. Um, we were migrating from a project called Sculpin. Anybody familiar with Sculpin as a project? You guys I know are. Um, so essentially Sculpin is a, a static site generator. So if people are familiar with Jekyll or Octopress, it's along that line. Um, it's written in PHP and it extends various Symfony components. Which, uh, and so essentially what I ended up doing in this case was I extracted the data from YAML. It stores its configuration in YAML um, and then created a separate database um, based off that, that data using a custom script with a few more Symfony components again. And what I ended up with was a database with a venues table, uh, an events table, speakers, and talks. So this is how it used to look. Um, we had a venues.yaml page, uh, which had a venues key, and then each of the venues were listed. Um, you notice we've, where we've got sift and we've got proctors, those were essentially our IDs. And in this case, we just stored the name, uh, essentially label, and on the website to link to. And that got transformed into this. So I used incrementing IDs, um, so 20, 29, 30, etc. Um, the name got mapped into its own column. Uh, and the website, and I also kept the old ID, so essentially the, the key string um, for reference, essentially. <coughs> Likewise for events, um, similar thing. We've got an events key with a list that contains the titles, the dates, um, the link to the GDO group, um, and, th and the location of the meetup. Um, and again, you notice that these keys reference the IDs that were set in the previous, the previous slide. And this is the resulting table. Um, there was some magic that happened in the background, and you'll notice that venue IDs match up with the IDs that were created in the previous table. So, nice relational database. And from this database, I could tell which events happened where, what talks happened to what event, and which speakers gave which talks. Um, when we had a source database, um, we had to add to our Drupal configuration. Um, so this was in my settings.php file. This is the fairly standard um, <coughs> Drupal VM settings file with Drupal, Drupal, Drupal everywhere. Um, so essentially I had a second database. Um, this one was keyed with migrate. And um, that was Drupal 8's way of knowing where do I get the data from in order to import it into the Drupal 8 site. Um, when I had that, I had to start writing my custom migration. So, I had to write a custom module. <coughs> this was the structure of said module. Um, so, you notice that there's an info YAML file. If you're not used to doing Drupal 8 modules, Drupal 7 had .info files where we declared information for our module. Uh, Drupal 8 uses info.yaml files. Um, there's no .module file because we just didn't need it. It's optional in D8. Um, there is an install file. So, you notice that the top there we've got some configuration 
within the config directory and the install directory, those are um, custom migration plugins that get installed, run when um, the, site, the modules are installed. So within the install file, we've got the uninstallers for them. Um, and then within our SLC directory, that's where the PHP code now lives. And they've created uh, four different events um, sources. That's the word. Um, so each one, one for events, speakers, etc. So in that case, it's the bottom half is fairly similar to Drupal 7. If you ignore the file structure, everything the top half is pretty different. So this is my info YAML file. Um, it's also got the name and the description. These are fairly familiar if you're doing Drupal 7 development. Uh, you need to specify types. In the case, it's a module as opposed to anything else. Um, it's Drupal 8 core. Uh, put it within the Drupal Bristol package. Again, very similar to Drupal 7. And I'm defining some dependencies. So we're going to depend on the migrate module provided by Drupal core. Uh, I'm also going to rely on uh, depend on the Migrate Plus and the Migrate Tools modules. So the first thing I need to do is create a migration group. This is one of the things that changed <laughs> between the, the first implementation and, and the more recent um, update to it. Um, so in this case, this is provided by the Migrate Plus module. So you'll notice the file name um, includes Migrate underscore plus and followed by the key migration underscore group and then the name of the group. So Drupal Bristol dot YML. And this is just a very bare bones um, implementation. So I've literally given it an ID and a label. There are other options you can pass. These are the sort of the minimum minimum I could get away with <laughs> essentially. Um, so now we've got the migration group we need to create a migration source. So this is the part where we're interacting with the migration uh, with the plugin API. We're extending um, the plugins that are given to us by the migrate module. <coughs> and so this class lives within our SLC directory and it lives within, it's got a namespace, so that namespace needs to match the directory. So in this case it actually lives within um, a plugin directory and then migrate source and then the name of our class. The class is venue term, so the file name is venue term.php. And we're going to extend the SQL base class because we were pulled it from the database. There are various others depending on what you're extending from. Uh, and this comment block that we see is the annotation. So this is something quite, that's used quite a lot within other PHP projects like Symfony. Um, it's a comment, but it's a comment that does something. So it gets passed by the PHP um, interpreter, for a better word, um, and the data gets extracted from it. <coughs> and it's using the at migrate source annotation, and we're giving it an ID, um, a venue underscore term. And we'll see later on where that actually gets, gets used. Within that class uh, is a query method. So that tells um, Drupal how to pass the source data, the migration database, the source database. Um, and we're going to just select everything from the venues table, the alias to V, just to do less typing. Um, and we're going to get the ID, the name, and the website columns. Um, if anyone's not familiar, this is using PHP's short array syntax. So the square brackets, either side essentially is the same as doing array, open bracket, close bracket. So, um, also we've got a get IDs method. So essentially we're defining primary keys is the way I try and think of it. Um, in this case, we're going to use the actual um, ID, the, the tape that was in, automatically generated by the table. Um, we're defining it as an integer, obviously. Um, I could have passed actually the string in, but it went for the integer. <coughs> uh, in this case, then we need to tell it which fields we're mapping to. So I've got the ID of the venue. I'm not sure that was actually used in the end. Um, the name was. Um, and we're just providing some labels for Drupal essentially to know how to pass it. Um, again, there's a slight Drupal 8 difference rather than just calling the T function, do this arrow T just to get it from a, a class. Function is the same thing. <coughs> um, if you've done Drupal 7 migrations, you might be familiar with the prepare row method. So what essentially that's saying is we've extracted the data from Drupal 7. Before we put it into Drupal 8, we can do some transformation. We can massage the data and we can alter it. Um, in this case, actually, this is what I'm doing. So originally, 
um, the speaker ID. So if we had multiple speakers giving a talk, they were comma separated in one column, whereas in this case we're going to map them to a, a multi-field entity reference, essentially. Um, so in this case we just going to explode the string. Um, so if it's yeah, obviously 1, 2, 3 in the source table, it will pass it through to Drupal 8 as an array of those values. So that's still there. Okay, so in terms of actually adding the migration, um, these are all done in the YAML files, and I said they run on install, so they live within the config install directory. Um, we did give it an ID um, label, so in this case we were importing the venue, um, the venues were mapped to taxonomy terms, and live within the Drupal Bristol migration group. Um, we're giving it a source plugin called venue underscore term. That matches the ID that was in our annotation. So now we know how the two map together. And we then need to give it a destination plugin. So in that case, it's using the entity plugin and it's a taxonomy term because entities uh, we're mapping to taxonomy. Yeah, and then continuing on from that, there's a process. Um, and essentially, this is how we map the fields. So we're going to map name to name, makes forward. Um, we're going to map um, the, keep saying version ID, the vocabulary ID. Um, we're going to use a plugin called default value, and we're going to pass it the default value of venues. So this is how we basically saying to Drupal, we're using the venues taxonomy vocabulary. Um, and then we're mapping the website the website value to a field called field underscore website. Um, so that's using the link module that's in call, but that allows you to have both an address and a title. Um, so we're just specifying that it's mapping to the URI within the field, um, field website field. Um, it's being cut off. Damn. Um, so what you'll see is if you go to the structure page, you get this migration. <laughs> that's going to happen all the time. The migrations thing there. Um, you'll see a list of them. Um, this is the Drupal Bristol migration group. Uh, we'll then they can open it and see all the migrations, or in this case, most of all the migrations. Um, and you can see that it's, counter, it's able to get, from what we've defined, it's able to pass each migration, um, find out how many rows there are to import. So we've got 62 events, um, nine venues. Uh, I didn't have the original speakers or talks, so I've just got one. Um, it tells you how many you've imported, how many you have left the process. So again, this is, again, if you've done Drupal 8 migrations, it's fairly similar. Um, and again, you just see a more graphical view of all your mappings and, and things. One thing I haven't noticed is if there's a way to actually run the migration through the UI. I will run them through Drush on the command line, which I'll show in a minute, but I was sort of expecting to see a big button that says run this migration, but I couldn't find one. Um, so yeah, actually running the migration, as I said, I'm doing the Drush. Um, the, the Drush commands are provided by the Migrate Tools module. Um, again, if you use Drupal 7 migrations, fairly similar. Um, you can use a Migrate Status command, uh, or MS for short, that gives you this output of essentially the same thing we just saw in the UI. Um, we can run Migrate Import, or actually run the migration. We can run the migration by group, so we can run all the Drupal Bristol migrations together. Uh, we can just run um, just one, so I shouldn't say group. We can just pass Drush Migrate Import, then the name, so venue underscore term, uh, just to run that single migration. Or we can just run dash dash all to run every migration, regardless of the group. Um, the nice thing about the Migrate API, if you're not aware, it also has rollback functionality. So there are various, each migration gets its own mapping table where it maps the original ID to the new ID. And essentially you can just roll back and it will delete the nodes that it's, if it's created and it keeps track of all those things. So the same functionality exists with migrate tools. Um, migrate dash rollback or just MR for short. Uh, and then there's also migrate stop. And sometimes if you just do a stop, it gets a little bit confused. There's a st uh, stateless column in the database. And it gets a little bit confused. So you, you do have to use um, reset status just to put it back to be pending or um, not run or whatever the, the original status is. Um, I'm going to try and do a demo. It's not hosted on Amazon, so we should be okay. Um, so we've got... Right, let's try this. 
this is my Drupal 8 site. It's a very small resolution, so we'll have to see. Um, I should be able to log in. There we go. So the only thing I've done with this Drupal 8 site is modules. So there are actually let's start from the beginning. So there are some Compton types, so I've already added in, I've done some basic site building. Um, so we do have a venues tab, uh, venues on the screen, venues um, taxonomy. This is currently empty, we haven't done any migrations yet. And then within structure, we do have uh, an event content type, a uh, speaker and a, a talk, and these are also all, all currently empty. So, awesome. There we go. So inside my background box already, and trying to remember if I've enabled this module. No. Okay. So currently no migrations. Just n minus y. Great. Yes, we should label this. Installed. Awesome. And then if you run migrate again. Okay, so, yeah, this is what. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So we can all see it. Okay, so you can see that we've got our migrations. Um, we can just go ahead and just run rush migrate. Let's run the venue terms first. And you can see it's gone through, process nine items. So what's done there in the background is just made nine taxonomy terms. Uh, if we go back to the side, we should be able to see. Taxonomy. Okay, so there, there are taxonomy terms. Awesome. Um, so let me go back. Now we've got that, we can run the event load migration. This actually went surprisingly quick. It's gone through and made 62 items in a matter of seconds. Pretty cool. Um, now we've got that. We can go content. Okay, so there are events that we've that it's pulled in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I will do them. Um, okay. Um, so this is actually coming from from the database that I've created. So yeah, so if I I should be able to open this. There we go. You can see most of it. So th these are the four tables that we've got. Um, these are all the events that. It's Pulling through. So these are the same as the slides that we saw at the beginning. So there are nine, nine um, venues. Um, there are all of our events, and then I've just made a couple of the test um, speakers and talks because I couldn't find them. Um, let's see, where are we? Okay, yes, yeah, so we've got the event nodes created. Uh, if we edit those, should we now see? It's map the titles. Um, I didn't map the dates on this occasion, but it has mapped the the link to the website, and also it's mapped the taxonomy reference, so it knows um, which which venue it's relating to. And so that's awesome. again. Let's just run Drush MS. Let's check where we are. Okay. So now we've done that. We can run migrate. Let's run the speakers. Oh, speaker. In this case. Just me. Uh, let's go back to content. Okay, there's a there's our speaker. And it's mapped in my tagline and my Twitter handles and my IDs. And then finally we can run um, the talk mode. So again, just got the one talk. So go back here, um, there's a talk, we'll edit it, it's mapped the body, body copy in. Um, we pass through restricted HTML as a default value also um, within the initial original script. Um, just map that. Um, it's mapped the speaker entity reference to the correct node. Uh, it's mapped the event to the right event taxonomy. Uh, and then it's also yeah, the sides links and, and the embed code all mapped across. Essentially, end of that. Yeah, 
no demo fans. Awesome. Um, okay, so yeah, just a, a few takeaways, I guess. Um, the code for the actual migration module is on GitHub. So um, that's the latest one. There is one within the, the Drupal Bristol organization, but this is the newest one uh, with all the migrate plus fixes and things in it. Um, so all in all, I found it. I did this when I had very little Drupal 8 experience. Um, this, I think, was my first Drupal 8 project. I thought, I'll try and put this together. Did all the site building bits. And then I, I did a few migrations before from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 and from custom source to Drupal 7. Um, and, and especially with the, the migrate tools module and <coughs> those two extra contribs in there, um, it felt similar. Um, I was used to having the, the commands there. Um, but obviously quite different because you've got the YAML files, you've got the annotations, and you've got the config entities. Um, but yes, yeah, familiar enough that I was able to figure it out probably within a few hours, essentially maybe longer. Um, and yeah, just a point, my great docs are and were excellent. Um, within the original my great module, they uh, had its own set of examples, um, and then the D8 examples module doesn't, but the migrate plus the migrate tools module do. So they've got some very good examples there of how to put these all together. Um, or we'll also use this repo as, a, as an example. Um, quick plug, we've got Drupal Camp Bristol coming up again in uh, 30th of June to the 2nd of July. Um, business day and we've got sessions and sprints again. And yeah, any questions? So what it does do, at least, is it, it does store the mapping table. So it knows that venue 1 is equal to taxonomy term 3, for example. So if you were to run the migration again, it would know it's already imported that term and then potentially skip it. I don't know whether there's a way of just saying import. I think, oh, actually, will it do it and update it, I think. One thing I have tried doing is to avoid doing that, and I have run migrations on several. I'm trying to think if you do run... I think if you run an update, you'll just skip it because it's been already imported. Well, I do think maybe the D7 version had an update flag you could pass it and you would update it. So I'm not sure that still exists in D8 in the, in the trip. I'm not sure. Sophie? Sorry, just to address that. Uh, we do the module for the Drupal Camp Bristol and the Drupal Camp Bristol Drupal <laughs> That's fine, yeah. yeah, I mean, there are also advantages to having um, almost like a teardown rebuild every night, so you can then ensure that your configuration is up to date as well. So that is a valid way of approaching it. Um, okay, yeah, there we go. So we can, it will do an update, but it looks like it will take the whole struct, like it will import everything again from scratch, essentially, rather than just picking and choosing. Well, as we saw, it went through 63 records within a second or two. So I don't think I wouldn't be too, it's not going to run for hours. I wouldn't think it's got lots of records. Um, there's a project we both work on. Okay. Lucy, we did 60,000 records in Windows 11 and we didn't have to bring it. Set it all up in all my own classes. Then, uh, made sure it didn't change, it didn't change the birds. It was completely, it was horrendous. 
the product to exist. And I would imagine you'd be able to do it, having done my grade, I think you should be able to use the same method. So you set it all up so you know that the, as long as your source structure doesn't change, you can run an update. And it has to go through all the records because they will change. And it should just update it. And, and then you'll finally, in a, you can kill the original. Um, but we did a huge, I mean, that was, that was a massive database. My question was actually, uh, if Migrate Tools is, provides the drush, yeah. does that mean out of the box you can't run Migrate? Because you say there's no GUI. Yeah, I'm not sure how to do it. <laughs> essentially. I did that, and I'm certainly expecting a little button to say, yeah, I don't. I yeah, I don't want to see. And everything else, so you can set up. Yeah, so if I go into migrations, then so what I was doing is looking at the, this, here's the group, and then list the migrations, and there's nothing. There's nothing in there. But there is. I think it's on its way. It's just you've got to remember this is experimental still. Yeah. I'm sure I use another module for migrate upgrade. And I'm sure that provided exactly what the old microbe did. Mm. So I had softly hard dependencies. Update, upgrade. Yeah, I'm sure it was something like that. So I think for upgrade, it's got like CSV stuff in it, and text files, things like that, to import things like that. No, no, no. Right, but out of the box. I'll have to fire it. I've got my, the VM on my. Uh, <laughs> I've got it on the VM on my. Oh. Uh, yeah, the other thing is I haven't really used the core migrate ones too much. I haven't used the migrate Drupal to Drupal yet because also this is coming from a custom database in, so it might be something within that migrate Drupal UI that I'm just not seeing because I'm not going down that route. But, yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you want to migrate from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, you've got uh, panel heavy content. So you have a node with a title and everything that node is panels. Okay. What is the best way to extract those nodes to get them into Drupal 8? Do you have to go and join tables in order to get the right fields out? Possibly. I mean, it, it does, if I go back, there were, there was a point where I was joining tables and I wasn't joining them, but somewhere. <coughs> no way. No, no. Yeah, so this, so essentially this is just a query, I think it's the query interface. So possibly at yeah, that, I'm sure you could just run join methods against and join what you need to get from there. Um, so if, you, if, if your page is quite heavy and has different sections and uses different sorts of panels mm -hmm. and UI elements, will that make it a heavy process too? It can do. So I've worked on one of the sites that I did migration for, I did Drupal 6 or Drupal 7. And as part of that, we were migrating from um, a gallery content type and a photo content type. And then we used a logical scold in Drupal 7, which had its own entity system. Um, and that, there had to be quite a, a fair amount of transformation in order to get it from what Drupal 6 had to what Drupal 7 had. Um, and that obviously adds time. Where's my slide? Um, yeah, that will increase the time for the migration. Our migration took several hours to run. We had to run this at various points. Um, but this was, where is it? There's the prepare row, which is what I'm looking for. I think it's this one. No, I can't find it. So there was a prepare row method we were extending, so I was doing it with the. I yeah, so there's a prepare row, a pre -row method. We were, it's in there somewhere. There's a prepare row method that I was using to take the comma-separated comma values from speakers, explode them into the array, and then pass them into Drupal. So if you had that, you do your table joins in the query method to give you the, the data that you need. And with the prepare row method, you can then transform it and say, we're going to concatenate these two together, split that out into something else, and then map that to, let's say, a body field. But um, yeah, that's, that's going to take. A, that's a really similar technique that we use to migrate from um, Oracle. Okay. We exported everything. We joined the tables that needed to be joined, exported to a CSV, 
and then that would be series three separately. Oh. This was then fed into Drupal 7, just sure. to migrate with you, map it all up. Yeah. Yeah, I say when I did do that, it was quite a lot of transformation to get to one yeah. to the other, and then I think probably as a result of doing that, it took yeah, it like we'd have to run it overnight, then come back in the next morning, and then see like the result of what migration did. So yeah, I think there's a trade-off there between yeah, the more transformation you do, and then the longer it will take to to run. Yeah. Briefly showed the default value transfer. So are those plugins that can be applied on the field basis? So that's quite similar to Pero, but you can just have these plugins as well? Or is it yeah, so the default value was one that I found when I was Googling around and trying to find something. And I think that came from the Migrate <laughs> Tools examples, I think, originally. So whereas before, you'd maybe just, in D7, you'd just pass it a string and say, if this vocabulary, you have to use the default plugin. There's a whole, li like, there's a whole list of standard plugins you probably could use in that scenario but um, what I was doing then when we did the, um, the, the YAML files is to find our own plugins on top of that and so yeah you probably could even do it that way Yeah, because that um, the exploding your complicity list in the repair room, I imagine that's something that most people that are going to run migration are going to do sort of that mm -hmm. I think would be a plugin that would be a lot easier Yeah, I think in that case it was just a case of this is what I'm familiar with from Drupal 7, and it was sort of natural to me to go, oh, prepare row method, we'll yeah. sort of use that. Whereas there, there may have been, as you said, like another plugin or some, you probably could have written a comma, separate, explode plugin, and just have that as a separate library, essentially, and, and just use that. So that the, probably could do that in either way, in multiple ways, because Drupal, <laughs> that's just the way I attached, um, went about, purely mostly based on having done migrations before in D7 and trying to find, I guess, similar or more some natural things to me, I guess, to do that way. So, yeah. Um, were the callbacks, sorry, were the default values in the callbacks or were they actually default values for the um, so I'll, I'll see if I can find it. So default value is a plugin, um, but then we're passing a value into default value. So it's, Uh, let's see. Too many slides. Okay. So yeah, we're telling it. It's kind of a little bit confusing initially. We've got a plugin, and the the, val the name of the plugin is default underscore value, but then the next key is then default underscore value, and that's where you pass it the actual value to give the default value to give to the, <laughs> give to the thing. So, yeah, essentially it's passing venues as a string into the default value plugin, and uh, then using that to populate the field, and it's um, not the field, but the property of uh, vocabulary. Migrating files, is there anything to watch out for? Um, I didn't have to do it with this migration. Um, I did it previously in the Drupal 7 version, so I can speak to that a little bit. And it, if I remember correctly, literally tried to take the file, sort of serialize it and copy all this data and make a new file on the other end, which was obviously quite um, resource intensive. So what, the best thing I found for doing that was just to take the physical files off disk, put them onto the, um, the new server essentially, and then just had to skip out that whole process. So you don't bother doing this bit. The files are already here, and then just map them to the same um, pass of the same file IDs on the, the other on the desolation side as well. If you do if you do a file migration, it's true to just use the defaults, and if that doesn't work, then go and change it. Uh, change the pass. It's the pass because somebody on IRC had the same problem as I had when the files weren't mapping properly. Mm -hmm. But I will. Having done lots of migrations, I'm going to tweak the path before I start the test migration. I defaulted that and used the one out of the box and it worked fine. So if it's Drupal, if it's non Drupal, then you can have to change, change your path. <coughs> Yeah, so a lot, a lot of the core stuff will be handled within the, um, the Drupal to Drupal migrate. If it's 7 or for Drupal 8, it's got a separate migrate Drupal. I think. So it was renamed slightly in, 
stage. So, so a lot of that, it should sort of handle, or at least give you maybe a starting point for reference if you do need to do something more custom. Yeah. Is there a slide you have for mapping like slash theory? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some <laughs> Like, how do you find out all the possible options that start something? Uh, how do I do that? I think, I think I may have even done it once to the UI <laughs> and then sort of reverse engineered it to find out what it intended to afterwards. Um, there's probably a better way of doing it, but that's probably the way I found it. Um, I was fairly familiar with that sort of syntax from doing, was it one of these? Maybe not. Um, if you're doing body, the body field, which I did do in one of the others. I don't think it's only slides, but when you map the body field, you have to map it to the format, and then the value is the actual text, and the format is full HTML, through the HTML. Um, actually, it must be somewhere, because I did it. Yeah, this is the actual thing. It's just fine. Body. Yeah, this type of... Um, this type of format. So I was familiar with this type of thing, having done Drupal, Drupal 7 migrations, essentially. So you're saying, we're mapping it to the body field, but the value part of the body, and in this case then, this is using, this is using the restricted values plugin again to say, um, the format is going to be a default value of restricted HTML, which is where it got that from when we, we saw it on the, on the Drupal side. Um, yeah, I think I literally must have either, yeah, either got it from the examples, because the examples are very good, or I think maybe made the node once manually and then work my <laughs> way backwards, find out what they were set to. Have you got any experience with the um, field collection uh, migration? Um, I was looking at field collection recently for a project. I think field collection is more or less deprecated to paragraphs now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I don't know whether paragraphs covers its own. Well, that has migrations or something. Else. I've seen HTML to paragraphs migration. Quite cool. But, um, yeah, no. And hopefully not. <laughs> I have to do it again. I only started using merging sites, such as, say, two Drupal 8 sites. You want to migrate together on one Drupal 8 site, you want to migrate into a pre-existing Drupal 8 site. You can have multiple migrations. So you can, you can have site A migration and site B migration and run them together. And then, say, so, yeah, take nodes. 1 to 100, maybe from this side, 101 to 200 from that side. Right. That would work. Into a, a third side. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. So you just, in that case, maybe you have, I've only got two, two, I have two databases, so I've got the, the Drupal 8 and the Drupal 7 one. But if you're migrating from two um, additional sources, you could either you know, just put more databases in, put, add them in your settings or PHP, and that makes the migrate module aware of them. And then it's a case of then, um, maybe sort of like the query fields and things, you tell it which table to reference. So I've called so, them migrating. So this strategy is based on having a linear Drupal, essentially, yeah. and migrating into that. Yeah, but it means then, previous versions, it meant you didn't have to carry across the cruff, for a better word, from your previous sites. You didn't have to keep still having Drupal 6 tables inside the database. Um, but yeah, for Drupal 8, you have to, as far as I'm aware, still just start completely from scratch, rebuild it all, create your the types in hand again, and then migrate your data in. So. Yeah. Did you say you, um, you did migration with the Scold module? Yeah. What, what are the issues that you had? Um, just Scold expects things in a very certain way. And yeah. I think it was a case of previously, this was a couple of years ago, but it, I think they were Drupal 6, it was a photo content type and then a gallery content type, and then one reference the other via node reference, if I remember correctly. Right. So it was just so a lot of the peer row to figure out which is the pairing of this and okay. sort of massage it into the way the skull wanted it to be. Um, it worked. <laughs> it was great. It went across. But yeah. How did you solve that problem? You lots of tweaking after migrating it. Yeah, I think we were, I think we were running nightly migrations at that point. So I was working on something. We were taking. This was for like a fairly well-known site within its community. Let's say that way. Um, so it's quite imperative that everything works after migration. Yeah. So we ran through it several times, and we'd right. take the database live, put it back onto a staging box, rerun the migration overnight. It was taking several hours, yeah. uh, and then just yeah, keep an eye on it afterwards. But 
yeah, it, it, yeah it's a lot of massaging to get it exactly the way it's called wanted it to work. Yeah. Um, just to get the, the peer in, if I remember right, it was, it has its own entity system, if I remember correctly, yeah. so you have to sort of work out how that works and yeah. how does this gallery fit within that, uh, this photo within that gallery, etc. Yeah. So. Well, the, the issue we're having at the moment is we need to migrate a few separate sites that use score module into one domain access instance. Okay. So I don't know whether you've been through that. Not forward to that, no, I yeah, we've gone from let's say Drupal six two concepts into one right, scroll okay. module. I'd imagine if you're doing that, that might be easier because it's already in the same, yeah. the right format to begin with, right. rather than having to get it into the right format. I'd imagine. Right. Yeah. Amen. What about other data sources like JSON? Yeah. Uh, not sure, but, yeah. This is something I considered before I did the initial migration. So I thought, I've got the files in YAML. Do I want to just write a YAML parser and then take it straight from YAML into Drupal 8? Or do I want to have that extra step of writing the scripts and using, essentially it was using um, Symfony's YAML parser and PHP's PDO object. So pass the YAML into an array, essentially, write that into a database. So I decided to go down that route because I sort of thought that was going to be the way I'd have to approach most of them. <laughs> so this would sort of be a good trial run for how to do this in the future, and I'm more likely to do it that way. Um, one of the slides we did have um, is extending an SQL-based class. So depending, I think, on what source you get it from, you extend a different class at that point and um, see what it gives you. That gives you various helpful methods and things to go from there. I think they mostly inherit a simpler interface. Most of the methods will be the same, just what it does behind the scenes will be slightly different. Yeah, so there's, I think, um, yes. <laughs> so yeah, originally we had these in there. Um, so you can sort of do this, and this was, so this, yeah, this is the talk migration. Um, so yeah, the talks, have to, you have to have events, and you have to have speakers before you can do talks. So, um, this is in um, the talk node YAML, so this is within this one here. So yeah, when you, so this is within the migration um, plugin. So after we've done all the field mapping, um, it's, yeah, migrate dependencies at the bottom. So I seem to remember in seven there was sort of a hard and a soft dependency, so it had to run or not. But I think this is just this guy was one called required, and if you try and run it um, without having it, it will just say this can't be run or can't be processed or something at that point. Sorry? Yeah, I, I'm, not sure, I'm assuming you can pass other options other than, other than required. So as I say, I think there was sort of soft and hard dependencies. In this case, um, they had to run. So you have to have, there's no point in migrating a talk if you don't have A, the speaker, or B, um, the event to map it to. So in this case, I was quite happy just using required as a pass to run it before you can do it. Anymore. Cool. Right. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Lunch time. <laughs>